Good evening and welcome to The Hampstead Decides on the ABC, Australia's leading election network, not counting Sky News. And we're uh, 10 days into the campaign now, and if you haven't really followed it so far, bloody good decision. Absolutely. But look, let's begin at the beginning. When Kevin Rudd called the election, of course, he promised Australians... A new way. A new way in 2013, which is a big change from 2012. We need to have a new way of... And 2011... <laughs> Julia Gillard is spearheading a new way... And 2010... New, uh, new way of looking at things. And 2009... This really is a new way of government <laughs> working. And 2008... Be a new way of governing. <laughs> and even back in 1996, Paul Keating was talking about a new way. <laughs> So I think that the slogan that Kevin Rudd was really looking for was a new, new way again for real this time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Abbott's way with words hasn't been much better this campaign. Notched it up yeah. the best gaffe mm. of the week so far. No one, however smart, however well educated, however experienced, is the suppository of all <laughs> wisdom. Now, the ironic thing about Abbott's gaffe is that all of Tony Abbott's wisdom can actually be fitted into a suppository and, in fact, they're hoping to have it inserted into James Diaz so he can remember that six-point plan. Oh. Then um, Abbott's headaches, of course, then continued with the revelation that his Twitter account had 70,000 fake followers. Yeah, someone got sus when they noticed the names of some of his followers, like fake follower 72, fake follower 68,508, and least convincingly of all, Malcolm Turnbull. Oh, come on. As if he would follow that. No one's buying that. No. Now, Kevin Rudd, of course, he is an absolute king of social media. He's got Twitter, Instagram, and just to cover all the bases, he's actually got Grinder as well. And I love the catchphrase on his account. Look at this. I got a hunzi. Well, we might need some relief. He might need some relief he after might. the flack uh, he copped in the first debate last Sunday. He was accused of cheating by relying on notes. But, look, it's not like Tony Abbott did any better. I mean, you can clearly see him writing down some notes of his own there. And I, mm. I, I think he was doing some kind of vocab exercises <laughs> to avoid yeah, future yeah, mistakes yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Now, um, a lot of pundits have commented just how dull the first debate was. Yes. It was one of the most boring debates <laughs> I've ever sat through. And and that's coming from Michael Rowland, who, as host of ABC Breakfast, knows a thing or two about dull TV. <laughs> Look, it, uh, the debate wasn't all bad. I, uh, I quite enjoyed Channel 7's coverage. Uh, you see, we're halfway into it. They, they tilted the sets, which uh, I thought yeah, was uh, yeah, very, yeah, very, yeah, very good, wasn't that's it? That's innovation. And look, that wasn't their only innovation. They also tried to spice up the panel of journalists by getting in some slightly bigger names than Lyndall Curtis. Let's get to our first question from our uh, uh, panel of journalists. And who's here with me today? My sister Chris is in the audience. Really? It's now up to you to choose real change. A huge, gigantic yes for me! It was a real party oh, atmosphere, wow. wasn't it? I really love that moment as well where, where Rudd started doing the Macarena. Mm. Very good. Very now, good. of course, Channel 7's other big innovation, and this has been across the whole campaign, is the truthometer. It says his comments in the Labor ad are. True. Now, this is an absolutely great innovation mm. for viewers, except for the time that Channel 7 accidentally oh, left it running tonight, during today tonight. Yeah. <laughs> but Abbott is still very much the bookies' favourite in the election. Uh, Rudd is trailing behind in the polls, and I think that's possibly because he's spending his every minute campaigning to people who can't vote. Although, <laughs> you know, why wouldn't he spend time with kids? He's just got such a natural, wonderful rapport oh, with them. Yes. Okay, who's ever seen an avalanche? Uh, have any of you ever been in a blizzard? No. Have any of you uh, ever uh, engaged in um, a conquest? Conquest, yes. Don't ever say that's a man who needs to work on his communication skills. That no one does small talk no, like Kevin. No. For everywhere he goes, people are astounded by his ability to make conversation. Okay, who's ever seen an avalanche? Uh, have any of you ever been in a blizzard? Okay, who's ever seen an avalanche? Have any of you ever been in a blizzard? Have any of you ever engaged in um, a conquest? He's good. So while Rudd keeps talking to the children, Abbott's been working the other end of the spectrum, campaigning uh, at a senior citizens forum. And I must say, I thought his comments afterwards about some of the old people was a little bit off. 
I think I can probably say have a bit of sex appeal. <laughs> no, no, you can't. No. They were, of course, uh, Abbott's comments about the uh, two members for Lindsay. And this morning he defended his choice of words. I had a dad moment. Mm. Calling young people sexy, it's more of a hey dad moment, Tony. <laughs> Speaking of sexy, Tuesday, of course, saw the release of the PFO figures. Mm. i got to admit, I, I just couldn't really understand them at no, all. No, I don't get PFO at all. But uh, I think we might need someone who's been there on the inside. And this is a man who just quit politics to pursue his real calling as a rock and roll star. You know him from that Wyala Wipeout clip. And we're thrilled no tonight Wyala to have Wipeout Craig Emerson fronting TV. our house no band. Wyala so please, Wipeout to tell us what on... PFO's all about, please welcome Emmo and the Wipeout. <laughs> It's a pre-election economic and fiscal outlook there on my TV. It's required by the Charter of Budget Honesty 1988. And it's shocking me right out of my brain. Shocking me right out of my brain. Emma on the wall. Emma on the wall. I can't even say Emma on the White House, ladies and gentlemen. That was fantastic. Oh, yes. Now, Emma, of course, is not running at this election, mm. but after the last-minute leadership change, the Labor campaign team has been very busy. Well, yeah. I have. I mean, they'd already spent thousands of dollars making Julia Gillard's campaign ads, so when Labor did change leaders at the 11th hour, they really had to scramble to amend those ads, but I think they've done a pretty seamless job. Tony Abbott wants to slash jobs and workers' rights, so this election, don't risk change. with the stable team of Ju Kevin Rudd and Labor. After three weeks in the top job, Prime Minister Rudd has laid a great foundation for Australia, but there's still a lot more he wants to change completely. Most importantly, Kevin will ensure the budget is in surplus by 2019. As Australia's 40 first Prime Minister, only Kevin understands the importance of issues like women's health because sometimes it takes a man to understand what women really want. So on September 7, vote for Kevin Rudd and Labor. A new way that's so new, even we weren't ready for it. Authorised you right now, keep going back. Mm. Uh, welcome to Inside the Wheel. Now, not many people have heard about this, but apparently we're having a problem with boats. Oh, I hear about this. Just ask Steve Price and Andrew Bolt. The average number of boat people arriving per day has been 100. Got an invasion on their hands. That's a dead set invasion. 100 a day is a huge number of people. That's like Steve Price's entire audience. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and just as desperate. Yeah, worse still, they, these boat people, they're not even real refugees, you know. No? Oh, no, no. Ray Hadley's revealed they're all chart topping rappers. They're wearing dishonest clothes. Some people are sitting with gold jewelry, watches worth thousands of dollars. There might be a half a percent who are genuine refugees. <laughs> two passengers, two crew. This is the holiday cruise of a lifetime. <laughs> No, it is, it is. It's a holiday. It's a holiday in I mean, I, I booked one myself, actually, with Con Leaky Tours. <laughs> yeah, so, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so what's Labor going to do about these holiday makers? Well, I'm afraid we're not getting any help from Labor because, oh, no, no. far from stopping boats, Rudd loves boats. Mr Rudd was the one that actually started the boats. Yeah, he was the one that actually got in each boat and turned the key. And it gets even worse. Well, Kevin Rudd is the best friend the people smugglers have ever had. Yeah, is he, is he best friend? I reckon Tony can do better than that. Uh, Mr Rudd is not just the best friend that the people smugglers have had, he's actually their travel agent. Uh, <laughs> keep going, mate. Not weird enough. What do you propose to do, Mr Rudd? Do you want to massage the boats? OK, OK, that's weird, that's weird. Uh, Kevin Rudd's a boat masseur. Uh, you got anything else? 
At the moment, all he's doing is servicing the boats. <laughs> Servicing the boats. Hang on, hang on. Is Tony Abbott saying that Kevin Rudd likes to... Oh, <laughs> look at that. I mean, that is not statesman-like behaviour. Oh, what must Therese think? Hang on. Labor committed themselves to... A regional solution. Regional solution. A uh, regional solution. A regional solution. Uh, this region here. Yes, and the first... Uh... <laughs> The first element of this regional solution was an advert designed to scare away refugees. No, 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 that's too scary, too scary. No, 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 I mean this one. The people smugglers guarantee is now worthless. You know, this ad was meant to scare off refugees by showing them who the Prime Minister is. I mean, he, he, he's a boat molester. I mean, no, no boat would come near that man. Well, I mean, the thing is, it actually worked, because they showed this ad all over Australian TV and radio. And since they did that, we haven't received one boat person from Australia. <laughs> no one! You, know, you may mock. No one! You, know, you may mock, but Sri Lankan boat people, they hang on every word that they hear on Mix FM. They're big fans. <laughs> they? they love the classic hits of the 70s, 80s and 90s, I think. You're listening to Love Song Dedications. And this one is going out to Ahmed, who is 40 nautical miles north of Christmas Island. <laughs> Ahmed. A special lady wants to tell you that you may live the rest of your life on Nauru, but you will always be permanently settled in her heart. <laughs> now, of course, that, that's not the only... <laughs> Love song dedication is not the only way that Rudd has fought mm. people smugglers. Now, he also brought in the PNG solution. Of course, yeah. Now, essentially, this allowed us to send boat people to Papua New Guinea where they can be safe. What could possibly go wrong with that? We actually grant refugee status to women fleeing domestic violence and sexual violence in Papua New Guinea. You see, now there's a humane solution for those PNG refugees. They get resettled in PNG. They're going to love it there. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? And the problem is, though, because it's hard to know who's right when Labor hasn't given any details. Brilliant. We've got to get to the detail. I mean, there is no details about the resettlement options. Once again, we have a Prime Minister making a big announcement but the detail and the operations and the costs are completely unknown. Mm. And Scott Morrison's right. It'd be the height of irresponsibility to, to mm. pretend that you have a plan and then refuse to give details. <laughs> I'm not about to compromise uh, the effectiveness of our policies of giving the people smugglers heads up on operational details. Oh. Wait till Scott Morrison hears what Scott Morrison said. Oh, Scott Morrison's going to be furious with Scott Morrison. <laughs> He's in trouble. Oh, but let's hear a bit more now about what the Liberals have to say. Now, when Scott Morrison is not attacking himself, he is <laughs> Mr Charisma. Oh, yeah, when Morrison speaks, the press hang on his every syllable. He looked the other way and not lifted a finger. There's <laughs> a media company here. I don't know why no one wants to hear Morrison out, because I reckon when he speaks, he's very profound. This will keep happening unless it stops. And it won't stop until it stops. You see, Morrison is an intellectual about border security, he is, you know. But Abbott speaks from the heart. In, in fact, I think Abbott is almost starting to concoct dirty fantasies about the whole thing. We only sleep safe in our beds at night because of rough men on our borders. <laughs> Yeah, well, here's, here's one of those rough men right now. There he is. <laughs> Keeping us safe at night. <laughs> well, as for those who make it past that guy, the liberal position is clear. You don't treat them like criminals over in PNG. You treat them like criminals here. If you've got an asylum seeker living nearby, the opposition says you should be told. I wouldn't put paedophiles and asylum seekers in the same category, necessarily. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't categorise them with paedophiles necessarily. No, you might do it opportunistically or exploitatively <laughs> or maybe unethically, but you wouldn't do it necessarily. Look, uh, Andrew, Andrew, seriously, it's, it's, it's not the same thing as having a paedophile register. It's not. It's, it's, Erica Betts is trying to help people be neighbourly. You know why that's helpful for social harmony? So that when somebody shouts across the fence, good day, mate, and they don't answer, it's not because they're snobs, but because they don't understand. Oh, <laughs> see, it, it makes sense. <laughs> That's exactly why I think there should be an Erica Betts register, so that a Betts' neighbours know there's a mean bugger living next door. <laughs> anyway, 
that, that, that's old hat. That, don't patronise us. That's old hat because the Libs have a brand new border protection policy, which is even easier to understand than stop the boats. Allow Channel Nine's graphics team to explain. Yes, now the Liberal solution is called Operation Sovereign Borders. And uh, as far as I can tell, it involves a three-star commander who's, whose father is the defence chief and it turns out his uncle is the immigration minister. And they all design a whole bunch of logos. So we're talking a lot of logos they have to make. And this is very hard. It takes like 100 days to do this. And then they all get on board a great big pirate ship and that's how you turn back boats. <laughs> there you go. But, uh, there it is. <laughs> oh! oh. Just brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Look, uh, the good news is there are some non-pirate ship-based solutions. Take Afghani Farwad Ahmed, for example. Now, the government was extremely happy to grant him refugee status. Farwad is uh, uh, an Australian citizen, uh, an Aussie, uh, and uh, that is, I think, a very, a very good thing. It was so easy. All he had to do was become a world-class leg spinner. So get off your asses, refos, and learn to play cricket. No, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's a good way in. In fact, I, actually, these processing requirements are already being implemented in PNG. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's your, it's your ticket. Isn't it? Or even better, uh, you could call in Scott Don Draper Morrison. Did you, did you happen to know what Morrison did before he was a politician? No, a uh, male model, was he? Uh, not quite. He, uh, he ran Tourism Australia oh, oh. in 2007. Do you know what Tourism Australia did in 2007? Oh, enlighten me. This. So where the bloody hell are you? By spearheading that ad campaign, Morrison single-handedly kept more people away from Australia than any policy since. Well, well there's your answer right there. Get Morrison back on the job! If you arrive my boat, you'll be forced to watch being Lara Bingle on an endless loop while the Prime Minister has sex with your boat. Stay away. Welcome to this very special Hamster Decides edition of Question Time. Our first guest is a federal MP and the leader of Catter's Australia Party. Please welcome Bob Catter. Bob Catter MP, there on my TV. Bob Catter MP, member for Kennedy. Bob Catter MP, there on my TV, shocking me right out of my brain. Bob Catter, thanks for joining us. Your question time starts now. <laughs> I'm going to show you a clip, Bob. <clears throat> question. True or false? I'm a Martian astronaut, Mr. Acting Speaker, I can assure you. <laughs> it's a bloke that looks like me. It's a bloke that looks like me. Right, in this election, you are not the only maverick Queenslander with a party named after himself. Catter's Australia Party is up against Clive Palmer's United Australia Party. Which Hollywood blockbuster film is Clive Palmer currently spending billions of dollars to recreate? The Titanic, and he's invited me for a trip on it a number of times, and I said, are you going on it, Clive? He said, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is, in fact, clueless, so... <laughs> The Labor candidate in your seat was disendorsed for saying that Tony Abbott has plans to bring back the White Australia policy. Was that statement a problem, A, because it suggests that Tony Abbott is racist, or B, because it suggests that Tony Abbott has a policy? <laughs> I, I definitely lean to the latter. <laughs> Correct. All right. This question is about the way you communicate. Would you say you're an effective communicator, Bob? Extremely effective. <laughs> No, no, mild. Mild. Oh, and, and, you know, <laughs> get out of bed. Um, you're the governor, you're the town expert. Uh, Glenn, it's, it's, again, a look alike. All right, look -alike. okay. <laughs> right, last question. Your question is, is this image from one of the great institutions of rural Australia, the Bachelors and Spinsters Ball, a B&S, or is it a gay wedding? <laughs> B&S or gay wedding, Bob Catter? You know, I'm not into... Men, you know, he's, the pictures of Sheila still. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> B&S or gay wedding? <laughs> mm. 
I have been some of ENSs and I've got seen scenes like that. I don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take your there word for that There were Sheila's inside, but I, I got to point out that. I mean. Unfortunately, that is all we have time for. Bob Catter, thank you very much for being part of Question Time. <laughs>
And the ABC also has a truck. Here we see Prime Minister Menzies heading in the direction of Van Diemen's Land. But it's not just Rudd's plane that the media follow. The ABC also filmed the entire route his car might possibly drive. Also filmed the route the journalist took to find that idea. <laughs> but all the pattern, all the crossings, all the revealing Rudd's location to terrorist groups, it was all worth it for this historic footage. And there goes C1 now. Prime Minister Rudd on his way. Did you see it? <laughs> it was Kevin Rudd's chin! <laughs> A split second that will live in Australia's history. News, we salute you. Yes, now that is just about it for tonight. And uh, Craig, this is the fifth election now that Chaser has covered for the ABC, and there's no question it's shaping up as one of the most fascinating. Yeah, it certainly is. And as we saw, it's not always easy for journos covering the news on the fly. So we thought we'd leave you with a positive example showing just how smoothly it can be done. So here, for your enjoyment, is the complete and unedited credit sequence that Today Tonight ran on the night of the Labor leadership spill. Good night. I'm Helen Kappel. I'll see you tomorrow. OK, guys, now cut to the talking head of Julia. Sound off is probably better. <laughs> right, uh, well, that's enough of her. We should probably go to Rudd, so switch to Kevin. Switch to Kevin. <laughs> switch to Kevin, please. Yep, now uh, that stupid pole, bring that up. God, does anyone understand that thing? Just <laughs> take, take it off, take it off. It makes no sense. Right, well... Uh, it's probably time for the next program now, guys, so finish up. Thanks. What, what, do, you, what do you mean it's not ready? Home and Away was filmed three months ago, but, but where the... No, OK, no, that's, that's fine. We've got plenty more shots. Just roll in the new shots. Just uh, keep the new shots rolling in. I said new shots. <laughs> this handshake was lovely the first time, but we, we don't want... Yeah, ah. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. We've got thousands of these. And I said new shots. <laughs> well, you just played that ten bloody seconds. I mean, do our viewers really want... Oh, get that off. Get that off. Get... No, don't pause it. I said... Get... And get rid of the pole. What's that style? God. Get... Look, just get another shot. Any, any other shot will do... Any other shot would not accept that one. <laughs> oh, God. What is Kate Richie had an embolism? We're dying here for pity's sake. Get this... God. Just can... Ah, oh, this is worse than the Naomi Robson days. I mean, see, it, it, come on, look. It, no, it's fine, OK? If you love that interview so much, just just leave it there. We're, we're today, tonight, our audience is a brain dead anyway. It's just... Oh, no, that, that's it. I'm retiring. <laughs>